up the single most important national security uh, issue for the United States and the world, and that's climate change. It has not come up in the previous debates, even though it's been in every other debate in the past 20 years. And so that's what I'm going to be looking for and hoping for more than anything else. I want to thank you all for being with us. I, Jen Poo, labor organizer and director of the National Domestic Workers Alliance. I also want to thank Norman Solomon, longtime activist, co-founder of RootsAction.org, author of many books, including War Made Easy, How Presidents and Pundits Keep Spinning Us to Death. He ran for a Democratic nomination in Congress in this area, uh, barely lost. And Steve Zunis is professor of politics and international studies, also chair of Middle Eastern Studies at the University of San Francisco. As we broadcast to you um, from the Osher Marin Jewish Community Center here in Marin before a live audience. We are just moments away from the debate in Boca Raton, Florida between President Obama and the Republican challenger Mitt Romney. Um, they will be debating in Lynn University in Boca Raton. The moderator will be CBS News' Bob Schieffer. What we plan to do as we move forward is to bring in two third-party presidential candidates, expanding the debate, broadcasting the entire Obama-Romney debate, pausing the tape to give Green Party presidential nominee Jill Stein, Justice Party nominee Rocky Anderson, a chance to respond to the same questions. Uh, Stein and Anderson are here with us in San Rafael, California, and they will be seated as we turn now um, to tonight's debate moderator um, in Boca Raton, Florida, Bob Schieffer of CBS News. We are just about to turn to Boca Raton. Again, this has not been done before as we expand the debate, um, breaking the sound barrier. The presidential debates are brought to you by a private corporation called the Commission on Presidential Debates. Control of the debates was wrested from the League of Women Voters several decades ago when they refused to sign a secret contract with the Republican and Democratic parties and held a press conference instead. University releasing the contract. Let's go right now to Bob Schieffer in Florida. The last debate of the 2012 campaign brought to you by the Commission on Presidential Debates. This one's on foreign policy. I'm Bob Schieffer of CBS News. The questions are mine, and I have not shared them with the candidates or their aides. The audience has taken a vow of silence, no applause, no reaction of any kind, except right now when we welcome President Barack Obama and Governor Mitt Romney. Gentlemen, your uh, campaigns have agreed to certain rules, and they are simple. They've asked me to divide the evening into segments. I'll pose a question at the beginning of each segment. You will each have two minutes to respond, and then we will have a general discussion until we move to the next segment. Tonight's debate, as both of you know, comes on the 50th anniversary of the night that President Kennedy told the world that the Soviet Union had installed nuclear missiles in Cuba, perhaps the closest we've ever come to this nuclear war. And it is a sobering reminder that every president faces at some point an unexpected threat to our national security from abroad. So let's begin. The first segment is the uh, challenge of a uh, changing Middle East and the new face of terrorism. I'm going to put this into two segments, so you'll have two topic questions within this one segment on that subject. The first uh, question, and it concerns Libya. The uh, controversy over what happened there continues. Four Americans are dead, including an American ambassador. Questions remain. Uh, what happened? What caused it? Was it spontaneous? Was it an intelligence failure? Was it a policy failure? 
uh, was there an attempt to mislead people about what really happened? Governor Romney, you said this was an example of an American policy in the Middle East that is unraveling before our very eyes. I'd like to hear each of you give your thoughts on that. Governor Romney, you won the uh, toss. You go first. Thank you, Bob, and uh, thank you for agreeing to moderate this debate this evening. Thank you to Lynn University for welcoming us here. And Mr. President, it's good to be with you again. We were together at a humorous event a little earlier, and uh, it's nice to uh, maybe be funny this time, not on purpose. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, uh, this is obviously an area of great concern to the entire world and to America in particular, which is to see uh, a, a complete change in the, the, the structure and the, um, the environment in the Middle East. With the Arab Spring came a great deal of hope that there would be a change towards more moderation, an opportunity for greater participation on the part of women in, in public life and in uh, economic life in the Middle East. But instead, we've seen in nation after nation uh, a number of disturbing events. Of course, we see in Syria 30,000 civilians having been killed by the military there. Uh, we see in, in, uh, uh, in Libya uh, an attack uh, apparently by, well, I think we know now, by terrorists of some kind against, uh, against our people there, four people dead. Our hearts and, and minds go to them. Uh, Mali has been taken over, the northern part of Mali, by al-Qaeda type uh, uh, individuals. Uh, uh, we have in, in Egypt a Muslim Brotherhood president. And so what we're seeing is a, a, a pretty dramatic reversal in the kind of hopes we had for that region. And of course, the greatest threat of all is Iran, four years closer to a nuclear weapon. And, and we're going to have to recognize that we have to do as the president's done. I, I congratulate him on, on taking out Osama bin Laden and going after the leadership in Al-Qaeda. But we can't kill our way out of this mess. We're gonna to have to put in place a very comprehensive and robust strategy to help the, the, the world of Islam and, and other parts of the world reject this radical, violent extremism, which is, it's certainly not on the run. It's certainly not uh, hiding. This is a group that is now involved in 10 or, or 12 countries, and it presents an enormous threat to our friends, to the world, uh, to America long term, and we must have a comprehensive strategy to help reject this kind of extremism. Mr. President. Well, my first job as Commander-in-Chief, Bob, is to keep the American people safe, and that's what we've done over the last four years. We ended the war in Iraq, refocused our attention on those who actually killed us on 9-11. And as a consequence, Al-Qaeda's core leadership has been decimated. In addition, we're now able to transition out of Afghanistan in a responsible way, making sure that Afghans take responsibility for their own security. And that allows us also to rebuild alliances and make friends around the world to combat future threats. Now, with respect to Libya, uh, as I indicated in the last debate, when we received that phone call, I immediately made sure that, number one, we did everything we could to secure those Americans who were still in harm's way. Number two, that we would investigate exactly what happened. And number three, most importantly, that we would go after those who killed Americans and we would bring them to justice. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But I think it's important to step back and think about what happened in Libya. And keep in mind that I and Americans took leadership in organizing an international coalition that made sure that we were able to, without putting troops on the ground, at the cost of less than what we spent in two weeks in Iraq, liberate a country that had been under the yoke of dictatorship for 40 years got rid of a despot who had killed Americans. And as a consequence, despite this tragedy, you had tens of thousands of Libyans after the events in Benghazi marching and saying, America is our friend. We stand with them. Now, that represents the opportunity we have to take advantage of. And you know, Governor Romney, I'm glad that uh, you agree that we have been successful in going after Al Qaeda. But I have to tell you that you know, your strategy previously has been one that has been all over the map and is not designed to keep Americans safe or to build on the opportunities that exist in the Middle East. Well, my third party candidate, Green Party presidential candidate, Jill Stein. You have two minutes to respond to the question about the situation in Libya. 
Yes, thank you, Amy, and thank you so much to Democracy Now! for expanding this debate in a way that's absolutely essential. Um, and as we're getting set up here, I couldn't hear all of the um, comments of Barack Obama and Mitt Romney, but I'll respond generally to the issue of Libya and the tragic events at the embassy. And, you know, it's very clear that there is blowback going on now across the Middle East. Not only the unrest directed at the Libyan embassy, uh, likewise at the embassies really uh, across the Middle East, including in Egypt. Uh, we're seeing in Afghanistan, our soldiers are being shot at by the uh, police forces that they are supposed to be training in Afghanistan. We're seeing in Pakistan that 75% of Pakistanis actually identify the United States now as their enemy, not as their supporter or their ally. And, you know, in many ways we're seeing a very ill-conceived irresponsible and immoral war policy come back to haunt us, where United States foreign policies have been based, unfortunately, on brute military force and wars for oil. Under my administration, we will have a foreign policy based on international law and human rights and the use of diplomacy. And instead of fighting wars for oil, we will be leading, as America, we will be leading the fight to put an end to climate change. In Afghanistan and Iraq, we have spent about $5 trillion. We have seen thousands and thousands of American lives lost, hundreds of thousands of civilian lives lost, about a trillion dollars a year being spent on a massive, bloated, military, industrial security budget. Instead, we need to cut that military budget, right-size it to year 2000 levels, and build true security here at home, bringing our war dollars home. Rocky Anderson, presidential candidate of the Justice Party. You have two minutes. Thank you. The, the question was whether the killings at the embassy in Libya were a policy failure, whether they reflected a policy failure. And it is so clear to everyone that the policy failure has been in the way the United States has treated so many nations in the Middle East. We're like the bully that never got counseling and we keep wondering why don't they like us? We invaded Iraq and occupied that country. It was completely illegal. Two United Nations Secretaries General declared that it was illegal. It was a war of aggression, and it was all done on a pack of lies. Now, we aggravate the situation by keeping bases in so many other nations, including Saudi Arabia, uh, bolstering these tyrants, and at the same time, engaging in direct unmanned drone strikes in at least four sovereign nations, killing in the process, hundreds if not thousands of innocent men, women, and children. That is the policy failure, our belligerence, our efforts to control, to dominate, and to make certain that we will always have that control over the resources in these nations. That's what this is all about. We took over the government. We overthrew the Mossadegh government in Iran in 1953. We're still paying a heavy price for that. Uh, we have a history of doing that in this country, and I think that the American people have finally got it, that we need to start building friendly relationships with these nations and not go around with the kinds of belligerence where not only do we attack these countries, but Mitt Romney calling Russia our, our greatest geopolitical foe, for heaven's sakes, when we ought to be working with Russia to bring about a peaceful resolution of what's happening in Syria. So this is a holistic problem with a, an imperialist foreign policy that we have to turn around and the American people can see to it if we join together. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Well, my strategy is pretty strong.